Welcome to PowerTech Insights. In this tutorial, I will provide a comprehensive guide on fault finding and troubleshooting for a three-phase AC generator alternator part to the rectifier diode assembly. Let's get started. Safety precautions. To ensure safety, always verify proper grounding before testing. Use PPE to protect yourself, including gloves and safety glasses. Ensure that all safety protocols are in place, such as lockout tagout and PTW procedures. These tests should only be carried out by qualified and or experienced engineers who have received safety training on live equipment. All test instruments and their leads connectors probes must be checked to ensure that they are suitable for the voltage levels being tested and are in good working order. Never attempt to test a live generator without another competent person present to shut down the engine or switch gear as necessary. Ensure that the work area is safe. Other personnel in the area are advised of what you are doing. Warning notices and tapes are displayed to advise others of the hazards. Required equipment and tools. Digital multimeter for measuring voltage, resistance, and continuity. Clamp meter for measuring AC-DC current without disconnecting wires. 12-volt DC battery to excite the stator exciter. In this video, we will provide a comprehensive guide on fault diagnosis for the rectifier diode assembly. Let's get started. Fault finding and testing the rectifier diodes. Stop the generator set and switch off engine control circuit. Follow lockout tagout, LODO procedure. Remove the access covers from the air intake. Locate the main rectifier on the shaft. Possible symptoms, the symptoms of a diode failure. Diodes usually short circuit when they fail, but can also go open circuit if the solder connection fails with high current, usually if both positive and negative diodes are shorted. A self-excited AVR system may not build up voltage on run-up. If the AVR is PMG powered, the excitation protection will continuously trip off with or without load, depending on how many diodes have failed. With the battery test, output voltage will be low or zero. This depends upon whether there are one or more diodes faulty. During the battery test, a short circuit diode may become hot and open circuit its solder terminal. Two short circuit diodes across one phase of the exciter rotor, positive and negative polarity, may also overheat or burn out the exciter winding. Exciter rotor and main rectifier connections. Disconnect the six ends of the exciter rotor connections to the rectifier diodes. Checking the rectifier diodes. Switch the multimeter to the position indicating diode test position. With the positive test lead on the anode side of the diode, the meter should give a reading indicating electron flow. Reverse the multimeter leads so that the positive lead is on the anode side of the diode. The multimeter should now read OL, no electron flow. The positive plate diodes should give opposite polarity readings to above. A faulty diode will give a short circuit reading in both directions or an open circuit reading in both directions. Fault finding, testing of a varistor. Possible symptoms of a varistor failure. The varistor is a transient suppression device and is designed to protect the diodes from high transient voltages produced by fault conditions. Failure of a varistor usually results in the device going short circuit. If the AVR is PMG powered, the PMG generator will force sufficient current into a short circuit of a wrister to make it fail catastrophically explode. If the AVR is self-excited, the short circuit of a wrister will collapse the generator output voltage until the wrister is removed. The generator will operate normally without the wrister fitted, but the diodes are unprotected and may fail with the next transient fault surge. Checking the wrister. Switch the multimeter to position indicated for resistance ohm testing. The varistor should read infinity in both directions and has no polarity. A faulty varistor will be short circuit or burnt by fault current. Fault finding, testing the windings and main rectifier. Reconnect the battery if disconnected. Run the generator at nominal speed and recheck the output voltage. If the voltage is within 10% of nominal, the fault is now corrected. Any fault found with the rectifier assembly should now be corrected. With a 12-volt battery, the output voltage from the main stator should be balanced and within 1% across phases. 
the voltage should be within plus or negative 10% of the nominal volts. Insulation to earth should be more than 1 megaohm. If above tests are correct, the main stator and rectifier are okay. If the output voltage is still more than 10% lower than nominal, but balanced phase to phase, this indicates that there is a fault in the excitation windings. In next video, we are going to check the exciter stator windings. Please stay tuned. Warning. Always ensure that testing should be conducted by qualified personnel familiar with protection systems and that all safety procedures are strictly followed. Attempting these without proper training and safety precautions can result in serious injury or death. Do not try this at home or without the necessary expertise. PowerTech Insights is not responsible for any harm or damage caused by improper handling of electrical systems. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more expert tutorials. See you in the next video.